next year our nation is celebrating its glorious 75 years of independence and csir is celebrating its 80 years of long and dedicated service to the nation this webinar series are conducted we on weekly basis in a way to mark the milestones of azadi ka amrit mahotsav and csir at 80 by showcasing success stories from different csir laboratories in this series today's webinar is on development of lead free x ray shielding tiles and is developed by one of our csir laboratory situated in bhopal madhya pradesh the advanced materials and process research institute csir ampri the laboratory csir ampri is specialized in the broad fields of lightweight materials nano structured materials smart and functional materials and technologies for west to wealth development so to inform us more about the laboratory and particularly its lead free x ray shielding tiles we are joined today with esteemed speakers for the webinar dr avanish kumar srivastav director csir ampri mr sudipta saha president operations prism johnsons limited dr t s shabi scientist from csir ampri and dr s k s rathod chief scientist csir ampri i am dr shikha with you once again your host and scientist from science communication directorate at csir headquarters and well i i welcome you all for the webinar So we have with us Dr. Avanish Kumar Srivastav, who is currently serving as the Director CSIR Ampri. Dr. Srivastav received his MSc in Honors in Physics from IIT Roorkee and MTech in Material Sciences from IIT Kanpur, and also his PhD in Metallurgy from ISC Bangalore. He has contributed significantly in the field of processing, characterization, properties, and possible applications of metals and alloys, composites, semiconductors, and various nanostructures. Dr Srivastava has published about 300 research articles in reputed journals and has several patents in his name and has transferred 11 technologies to different industries including startups so Dr Srivastava has also received metallurgist of the year award in 2011 from ministry of steel government, government of india and materials research society of india mrsi medal in 2011 he is a fellow of the indian institute of metals and electron microscope society of india He is also the president of the Electron Microscope Society of India. Dr. Srivastava has been the part of the team receiving NIDC National Meritorious Invention Award 2020 for the innovation of lead-free red must base uh, mud based X-ray shielding tiles. The topic of the discussion today. So we shall start with the opening remarks by Director CSIR Ampri. Dr. Srivastava, over to you, sir. Sir, please unmute yourself. So, good morning, um, Namaskar to all of you, and um, thanks to CSIR headquarters for organizing such wonderful event on the occasion of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav and 80 years of CSIR. Uh, thanks for a nice introduction about M3 and about Director Two. Uh, Let me brief little bit about CSIR Advanced Materials and Process Research Institute, which in Hindi we call Pragat Padar Tata Prakram Ansandhan Sansthan. In short, CSIR Ampri, located at Bhopal. This is the only CSIR lab among out of 37 labs of CSIR, which is totally dedicated on R&D towards advanced materials and advanced processes. it's already brief that we are working on lightweight materials nano structured materials smart and functional materials waste to value added materials different kind of composites biomaterials and we are also in rural technology and water resource management in addition to that advanced processing like additive manufacturing and electromagnetic pulse coming to the today's topic waste to value added materials i should tell you that we are working on different ways to value added materials like agro waste industrial waste metallurgical waste uh, marble waste and different kind of waste among industrial waste this red mud comes in and this red mud is basically it's a bauxite residue generated during uh, the processing of uh, alumina out of bauxite in industries using bias process and surprisingly if you process 1 ton of alumina you will get 1 to 1.5 ton of uh, uh, this uh, red mud 
and this mud is red because it has high content of iron compound about 50 to 60 percent so across the globe uh, as per the data available data it says that in the year 2020 there was production of about 133 million tons of alumina and side by side this residue oxide residue which we call red mud was about 175 million ton it's a huge amount but it's uh, highly alkaline and in india itself about 4 to 5 million tons of uh, this uh, red mud is being produced every year it's uh, highly alkaline as i said ph is about 10 to 13 so when this is so alkaline it's a hazardous for environment and storage problem the so csar ampli as we are working on waste to value addition we try to convert this red mud into useful product and one of the red, uh, useful product we are going to talk today about the lead free x ray shielding tiles developed by csar ampli bhopal now this lead free x ray shielding tiles are very important especially for health sector where you can replace the lead lining especially in x ray room ct scan room cath lab and uh, in place of lead you can use this radiation shielding tiles made out of red mud red mud composition is about 50 to 60% and then some other compounds in this now replacing this uh, lead what we are going to achieve first thing lead is not good for health so we remove that from the hospitals then lead is imported so it's a import substitute so we are contributing towards atmanirbhar bharat our radiation shielding tiles are accredited by atomic energy regulatory board that is aerb government of india it also suffices the government of india program of made in india it's a waste to value addition a mantra of government of india and to make environment more friendly and it is extremely important for health sector because all lead lining in hospitals can be replaced and it's a import substitute and it's converted from a waste material and is cost effective moreover this technology we have already demonstrated at messrs saidip healthcare research private limited hospital in ahmednagar and is functioning very well aerb has also gone there and accredited their hospital then subsequently we have transferred know how to our industry partner mrs prince johnson you are going to hear them also very soon today and uh, after transferring this technology we have done very um, i mean very exhaustive collaborative work and now it is almost at the verge of product launch by mrs prince johns so this is what in brief i wanted to say and i wish all success for today's program and i also wish and i strongly hope on behalf of entire csr that our industry partner takes this uh, technology a long way with uh, good benefit to in terms of economy and also in terms of uh, contributing towards health sector making country more atmanirbhar bharat thank you very much dhanyawad jai thank you very much sir for the warm welcome and giving us a brief overview of the laboratory and also informing us about the technology of the talk today so we shall now move to our speakers to know more about the technology its development process and the significance so the first speaker for the webinar is dr t a shabi dr shabi completed his phd from university of siegen Germany with dad scholarship and has worked as a postdoctoral researcher at ULB Belgium and Zhejiang University China Dr Shabi is working as a scientist at CSIR Ampri uh, since 2017 and has vast experience in the development of uh, x-ray gamma ray and neutron shielding materials Dr Shabi has published uh, 12 research articles and 3 patents and has transferred one technology as one of the lead inventor he was the he was also the team member of uh, receiving nrdc national meritorious invention award 2020 for lead free red mud based x ray shielding tiles so i invite dr shabi to kindly inform us more about the technology 
from uh, CSIR Ampri. So over to you, Dr. Shavi. Okay, thank you. So, uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am uh, Dr. Shabi from CSR Amiri Bhopal. So, today I am going to talk about this uh, lead development of lead free X ray steel in tiles under success stories of CSIR, which co comes under the umbrella of Asatika Amit Magotsa. So, nowadays it's very difficult to imagine the life without radiation. Radiation means that it starts from radio waves to the gamma rays. So, radio waves are used for communication. And if you go to this gamma rays, it's also used for various purposes, like, for example, in the health sector, so X-rays are very well used for CT scan and other diagnosis purpose, and also for the cancer treatment. For example, here you can see the LINAC machines. Here in these LINAC machines, very high uh, electrons will be accelerated and they will be bombarded on this uh, tungsten filament and it will be producing very high energy beams up to 18 MeV that will be focused on the patient. But how to design the radiation shielding materials is we cannot only consider on the primary beams like X-rays or gamma rays, whatever we use, because whenever this uh, gamma rays, which the energy goes above 8 MeV, it will produce photoneutrons. And these neutrons are chargeless particles. It can travel few meters, hundreds of meters in the air. So whenever it interacts with these other atoms, it will be producing secondary neutrons and gamma rays and so on. So we have to have the radiation shielding material such a, that, such a way that which you can shield various secondary radiation as well. For example, here also the neutron therapy is also available for the cancer. The, uh, the cancer cells, they will first inject this uh, boron 10 which you can, or other material which you can capture more uh, neutrons. And it will produce uh, gamma rays, it will produce beta rays, and it will also produce alpha particles. So we need to also shield all this radiation. That's why it's very uh, important to design the radiation shielding materials also. So radiations are very, high energy radiations are very beneficial if you use properly. If you don't use properly, it is very hazardous. For example, these are these X-rays, gamma rays, and these ionizing particles like neutrons, alpha, beta, they can ionize whenever it bombard on our human body or uh, any atom. So it can kick out an electron. So as we know that these uh, electrons are responsible for making a bond. So whenever it interacts, it can break the DNA apart. So once the DNA is broken, so our body itself is can kill those cells or it can repair the cells. So if it's repair, well and good. And if it happened that incorrect repair occur, then again the body can kill that cells. If it doesn't kill, then it can, maybe part of the body part can also fail its function. Or these broken cells, they can mutate because it carries all the genetic information. For example, everybody will be aware Hiroshima and Nagasaki, as well as in the Cherno, wherever this nuclear uh, accident happens, still they are having uh, like handicapped people, uh, means the child, uh, they born with various problems, like handicap. So this is because of this radiation is, uh, damage is carried through the genetics. So it can also happen, heritable effect, as well as it can also lead to cancer. So as well as, uh, as per this uh, International Commission of Radiological Protection, an adult can be exposed to 20 millisievert of radiation per year. So uh, there are various uh, radiations are used. For example, alpha particles can be very easily shielded by a piece of paper. And beta particles are just an electron, so it can be easily shielded by an aluminum. And uh, X-rays and gamma rays are highly energetic. It can easily pass through aluminum and papers, but it can be easily shielded by high set materials like lead, tungsten, or barium, and so on. But lead was widely used, but nowadays uh, lead is become a toxic, the topmost hazardous material. And then, uh, so it's now usage has been uh, actually discouraged by many countries. And uh, the other thing is the neutrons. Neutron is cannot be shielded by the lead but it can be shielded by the concrete. So concrete can be good for shielding both X-rays and gamma rays, but 
we need very thick wall for example here you can see people are building this uh, radiotherapy bunker so they use 240 cm wide concrete means 2.4 meter wide concrete on the four side if you it will consume a huge useful space so it will become eventually expensive also moreover concrete is not stable it will develop cracks on time so which can lead to the radiation leakage since it is very wide people are also using making heavy weight concrete so they they make by uh, adding some high set iron ores or uh, lead ore and barite etc so uh, but here we have this red mud the red mud is an alumina industrial base and the red color shows that it has high content of iron so this we have converted into radiation shielding materials so already we are having the world nearly 2.7 billion tons of red mud which is underutilized and it is stored in the disposal plants if only 3 to 4 percent is used for little bit construction sectors as a source of iron ore as well as in the cement clinkers but it is a hazardous due to extreme ph and hazardous elements like heavy metals like lead and chromium arsenic present in this red mud they leach out and pollute the soil bodies so because of this reason they are stored in the specially designed clay lined ponds and it's become expensive and we are the fourth largest producer of red mud so red mud contains iron aluminum titanium silicon so these are the elements are suitable for radiation shielding application because whenever this uh, uh, x-ray energy fall on the k or l edge of this uh, elements it will absorb more so attenuation can increase by an order of magnitude so we have taken this red red mud mixed with a certain weight percentage of barium sulfate to improve its attenuation and ball mill together then we have added some binder and then we made the tiles through a common ceramic glue first we apply uh, the pressure the optimized pressure is around 52 mba pressure then we have applied it and then we taken the tiles and sintered between 900 to 1150 degrees celsius and uh, like this we have got the final tiles so here during sintering what happened there are uh, various phases like aluminum hydroxide feoh and calcium carbonate present in the red mud they decompose and they form some water vapor as well as very little amount of carbon dioxide i will explain later what is it's a drawback and also here you can see at uh, nearly 1200 degrees celsius there is a huge weight loss is occur actually this is happened due to this barium sulfate and it is not good for using for such a large scale production so we fix the temperature below uh, 200 degrees celsius and we found 1150 is the optimum temperature so at 1150 you can see here the barium sulfate is not uh, decomposed and it is staying acidy so it is suitable for making radiation shielding tiles through sintering process so then uh, the other important process one is attenuation the, then the properties of the tiles like their strength how much uh, what example is um, height of failure that's impact strength and its flexural strength so we have tested for our clay tiles it is giving good strength and uh, so it is suitable for construction applications then we have also tested its radiation shielding characteristics as per the ice standard 61331 and uh, as per this 10.5 mm thick tile possess the lead attenuation equivalent to 2 mm lead so wherever these hospitals where they are having extra diagnosis ct scanner rooms normally they are using 2 mm lead sheets so instead of that we can use 10.5 to 12 mm thick lead uh, this red, red mud based radiation shielding tile and as i mentioned that uh, red mud is also considered to be hazardous because of its heavy element leaching so we have tested for lead cadmium chromium and arsenic after sintering from these tiles we don't find uh, many uh, lead and cadmium was not leaching out so well below the detection limit that is well below the ppm level but chromium and arsenic was leaching little but still they are well below the permissible limit for example chromium is 2 ppm and for arsenic 0.2 ppm so they are well below that and uh, this we have transferred this technology to prism johnsons in the year of 2019 and we have fabricated the joint free tiles why we made the joint free tiles for action here we have this joint free tiles we made it and because when you make this uh, 
join so that no radiation will pass through that. That's why we made this uh, join free designs. And, uh, but surprisingly, actually, our uh, color of our tile is brown, dark brown. But you see, when we expose these tiles to the atmosphere, it becomes white. This is the pilot scale that we made the tiles in 2000, uh, beginning of 20 itself. But we see a lot of whiteness. Then we did a lot of R&D to uh, find out. So we found out that this is coming, the white powdery sodium sulfate. And then we did a lot of R&D to find out the origin of that because the red mud present, uh, so sodium present in the red mud react with the sulfate of barium sulfate and it forms sodium sulfate when we cinder above 1000 degrees Celsius. So we had only one option left. We have to make some stable phase, which can be stable up to 1200 degrees Celsius minimum. So then uh, we did uh, uh, try with a lot of binders. Then finally, we have succeeded with the phosphate binder and we made some stable phase. Meanwhile, we have tried other high set materials and we have put, we made a various composition. Maybe our industrial partner will explain what are the problems we faced also. Then the tiles were cracking when we were going pilot scale and the tiles were melting. So if you, we have tried nearly 218 various compositions to make these uh, tiles from the lab to the industry level. So we are happy to inform you that in the last September itself, we made the tiles in the pilot scale, both the glass tiles, you can see. And now uh, the toluamum thick tile possesses the attenuation equal to two mm at 100 kVp. Now these tiles are sent for uh, testing to BRC. So once we get the results, we are planning to commercialize this one. And it possesses sufficient plugural strength as well as the impact strength. And uh, this outreaching of our technology, so we have made a giant free tiles of nearly 2,500 square feet, and we have put it on the wall of uh, Cath Lab in MSID Healthcare Limited. And these tiles, uh, after paving it, it was tested by the ARB approved agencies, and it is found to be suitable for operation. So here you can see this Cath Lab, which is made using CSR Ambridge technology that is now in operations. So as I told earlier, uh, we see in this red mud tile, you can see pores. This porosity is quite high. I told already it's because it's, there are some hydroxide phase and carbonate phase, they decompose and they have trapped inside and they are creating these pores. Actually, these pores are not good for radiation shielding application, especially for, for X-ray shielding of up to clinical purpose, 140 kVp is fine. But if you want to go to for gamma rays and neutrons, they are very high energetic. So, well, we need also high density also. For example, the radiation attenuation is a chain process. For example, once whenever the incoming photon comes, it will be either absorbed through photoelectric effect or Compton scattering or elastic scattering. So then it will produce other secondary rays like neutrons or gamma rays and so on. So they have to be absorbed. So some other atom has to be very close by to absorb it. Density plays a very important role. So now we made, uh, we have uh, improved the density. For example, here you can see for the pure red mud, through the normal route, ceramic route, we made cold press and then fire. You can see up to 1200, the density is maximum 2.2. But when we use this hot press, we are getting up to 3.4 gram per cc. And we are also adding some high set metal, we reach up to 5.23 gram per cc. And we are also having very good compressive strength. For example, pure red mud, we are having close to 40, 35 MBA, and for the bismuth is to 85 MBA, which is more than sufficient for using in a building application. So uh, then we have tested this uh, gamma ray attenuation at VCC Kolkata, you can see the setup. So when we increase the thickness, the attenuation is also increasing. So we found out, for example, wherever they use cobalt-60, cobalt-60, for example, used for food sterilization plant, either food or medical products, so on. So wherever they use, whenever they use 180 mm thick lead, or they use 800 centimeter wide concrete. So for our material, for example, if you use the pure atmosphere, you can use just 482 mm, is close to half of the concrete. And also with bismuth, just 300 mm. But wherever they use lead, lead is structurally very weak. So they also make other concrete structure for making this 
proper uh, giving proper strength to the building so if we calculate the space also our shield will consume less space because it has sufficient strength also and now if we see the neutron attenuation for example here you can see the blank one and then here you see normally for neutron high density polyethylene is suitable for shielding this neutrons because of its large hydrogen content okay so but if you go to our this brown color is correspond to our sample so it is giving same attenuation of this high density polyethylene so it shows it is very good for both gamma rays as well as for neutron shielding application so now if you calculate the cost wise i actually want to say that the red mud is stored it's an underutilized waste for example the red mud pond broke out happened in hungary nearly 10 years back so it has covered nearly 40 square kilometer area and made those areas infertile and it's taken the life of 10 people and many people got injured so and also in india also there is a red mud pond broke out happened in muri also it happened in brazil also in china so that's why because it is hazardous nature they are stored in a well uh, designed plant and because of its alkalinity it will easily erode the structure also the support structure so the cost wise our material is nearly 1 by 3 cheaper than lead and also it is expected to save 1.6 billion worth import of toxic lead and it is also expected to consume nearly 1 million ton of red mud for building this addition the structures also so we like to conclude so we have made mechanically compatible red mud tiles as well as blocks and uh, 12 mm thick tile possess the attenuation equal to 2 mm lead and 300 uh, mm thick red mud bismuth block is sufficient to build a radiation shielding structure for the cobalt 60 here you can see for the various samples it is much thinner than this concrete which is currently used and close to the lead so it is economically very viable because we are using here industrial waste as a raw material so it can be used to build uh, nuclear power plants synchrotron radiation sources particle accelerators radiation therapy rooms and so on it is economically cheaper and it will suppress the accumulation of red mud it will reduce primary mining and it's also reduce the associated environmental problem so it is as also stable up to 1000 degree celsius and i would like to thank you for your attention i will be also playing one small video regarding this tile making csir advanced materials and process research institute in short csir ampri at bhopal has been working on the development of non toxic and lead free material to protect high energy radiation shielding which can be applicable from health to the strategic sectors mainly csir ampri's expertise lies on the conversion of industrial waste like red mud fly ash rice ash brine sludge etc into radiation shielding materials by arresting their hazardous nature in a scientific manner billion tons of such noxious industrial waste have been piled up in the disposal plants worldwide and pose serious threat to the environment due to particulate emission alkalinity heavy metal leaching etc csir ampri bhopal had transferred a technology on lead free x-ray shielding tiles to messrs prism johnson limited on 10th june 2019 at ansandhan bhavan new delhi in gracious presence of dr shekhar c mande honorable director general of council of scientific and industrial research that is csir and secretary department of scientific and industrial research that is gsir to the government of india csir ampri has developed this novel material using the industrial waste to shield x rays that comes out of the diagnostic x rays computerized tomography ct scanner cath lab etc nearly 6 mm thick material possesses the attenuation characteristics of 1 mm lead sheet since lead possesses 
a serious environmental hazard its uses is being discouraged world over this technology is nearly 3 times cheaper than the lead hence we use industrial waste as raw material the radiation shielding material developed by csr mp bopal was accredited by atomic energy regulatory board that is aerb of government of india and it has been reported as an alternative material of toxic lead to shielding high energy x ray photons recently ms saidi healthcare and research private limited ahmednagar maharashtra has used csar amplis technology to cover the wall of their three x ray diagnostic rooms one ct scan room and one cath lab and totally it's about 2500 square feet tiles were utilized and it has been tested and approved by aerb i am happy to say that joint free extra shielding tiles are being made at pilot scale at messrs prince johnson in collaboration with csir ampri bhopal on 13th march 2021 dr harshvardhan ji honorable union minister science and technology health and family welfare earth sciences and vice president of council of scientific and industrial research inaugurated the center for advanced radiation shielding and geopolymeric materials on this occasion shri sudip ko saha president of operation of messrs prince johnson did mention that lead free x ray shielding red mud tiles the product launch will be very soon maybe within a month or so accordingly we hope that our red mud radiation shielding tiles will be in market very soon thank you dhanyawad jai hind thank you everyone thank you dr shabi for your talk and for the uh, for this video as well so your talk was very helpful for us to understand uh, and get the detailed information and the technicalities behind development of this red bud based x ray shielding tiles and also the importance of this tiles in medical industry so we'll move to our uh, next speaker who is a collaborator and stakeholder of the technology mr sudipta saha from prism johnson limited mr saha is btech in chemical uh, technology specialized in ceramics from university of calcutta uh, and in, in his professional experience of nearly 29 years mr saha has participated and has taken lead role at different levels and functions to raise the ceramic tile industry Mr Mr Saha has worked and is specialized in germ free tiles water repellent tiles scratch free tiles anti stain tiles radiation shielding tiles cool roof tiles and a lot more so presently working as the president operation Mr Saha is heading operations of all its tile manufacturing plants at different locations of HNR Johnson in India so we'll now listen to Mr Sudipta Saha over to you please sir yeah presentation is visible no kindly share right now yes yeah presentation has come yeah good morning my heartfelt respect to honorable director dr shivastav csi rampri chief scientist dr rathar senior principal scientist dr akram dr shavi dr deepthi thought cf csi rampri and dr shikha csi r headquarter and other distinguished dignitaries and guest participants whoever seeing this uh, particular program prism johnson limited a familiar name in building materials industry having three divisions we have 7 million metric ton cement plant prism cement plant at satna madhya pradesh and rmc india is the generic name 
we are more than 100 ready mix concrete plants spread all across the all over the country hna johnson india johnson tiles a household name and more than 64 years presence in country myself responsible for all plants operation last 30 years i have witnessed phenomenal growth in tile industry from small 6 inch by 6 inch tile to 6 feet by 10 feet tiles and market is predominantly controlled by aesthetics and designs my basic focus is to develop an import value added product functionality in tile functionality in the tiles to meet the implied need of the society like germ free tiles time having germ killing properties anti static tile tile conducting and dissipating static electricity max grip tile which is a high friction resistant tile to avoid skidding tack tiles it is very close to my heart it is for visually impaired person to guide the pathway and give them self confidence cool roof tile tile reduces surface temperature comparison to adjacent concrete and saves electricity which is also green pro certified product positive tile mood enhancing tile positive means it is changing the mood of people who ever uh, in in place of that tile in their room today my privilege to represent most versatile and innovative tile company in country we work with mission improving lifestyle of our customers by providing innovative products and services innovation is the core of our long journey where knowledge is the key driver of this initiative in tile industry only our r&d center has approved by department of scientific and industrial research dsi and ministry of science and technology government of india we are proudly to be associated with different council of scientific and industrial laboratories csir ampri csir cgcri kolkata csir ncl pune and many other prestigious organization institute like iits iisc bangalore as well as bark from csir cgcri you have taken lot of couple of technologies like glass nodules for mitigation of nuclear waste ceramic membrane for ultra and uh, nano filtration and many more see tile industry witnessed many innovation for last two decades most of the innovation johnson pioneered many first in india and abroad is in johnson kitty like germ free tile stain free tile tack tile anti skid cool roof positive tiles and many more we have five patents based on our r&d and post to take this particular technology our tiles will be one stop tile solution for healthcare sector germ free tile anti static tile tack tile cool roof everywhere it can be used for healthcare industry couple of years back i was invited by earlier director general dr girish shahani to share my experience with directors in of different csir laboratories during director meet at that time dr srivastava talked with me and invited me to bhopal that was the starting point of our development to this product at industrial scale as this product having synergy with our product portfolio two years back in presence of present honorable director general dr shekhar mande we have entered the technology agreement at csir headquarter delhi with advice of dr sivastava highly knowledgeable and chief scientist and developer dr sunil shangi was the key person for this technology transfer dr rathor of product management head supported to materialize this transfer pandemic definitely disrupted the scale up process and many hurdles we faced to scale up from lab scale to industrial scale but at last indigenously developed innovative products for healthcare industries radiation shielding tile in the verge of launching as as director mentioned atmanirbhar bharat so it's a really indigenously developed and proud product of 
CSIR Ampri and Johnson. Basically, as Dr. Shabi mentioned, Dr. Srivastava mentioned many times that it is using in radiography, can be used in radiography and fluoroscopy unit, interventional radiology by cardiac angiography, computer tomography, dental CBCT, and OPG. So, actually, one things I come across in last two years, whenever I, I met with any consultant or architect of hospital industry, they always mention me that in Rexa shielding, they are nowhere using lead. Mostly they are using brick or concrete. And basic the extra, uh, they are gamma shielding, they are using lead 100% because concrete takes very high thickness, as Dr. Shabi mentioned. But what are the alternatives? They are using bricks, concrete as per their choice. But ultimately, brick. Brick, no standard control on density. A brick of Kolkata and brick of Delhi and brick of Bombay cannot be same of the same, not same density. So it cannot be 100% uh, withstanding the radiation shielding, as well as there is joints, there is no material for joints and grouts. So brick cannot be used. Whatever they're using, it's a using without choice. There is no choice in market. That's the reason. Concrete. Concrete develops cracks, air pockets during installation itself. And concrete develops cracks and propagate further during extra operation because of instant temperature. Other material like steel and lead. Steel is very heavy in structure, very difficult to install, conductive in nature. Cost is also very high. And lead, I should not say anything because high toxic, carcinogenic, as per ARCA, IARC and life of shielding is legs because gap generates due to itself loads it come down and very require very high skill of installations cost is also very high so so ultimately this is the only thing of choice and reference for recommendation of radiation shielding based on csir ampri technology is in this if you go through you will find that aer we also recommend this particular uh, technology to this particular radiation shielding training module, diagnostic radiology, you can find that it is mentioned lead free shielding material have been developed by CSIR. This material may also be used as radiation protection for medical diagnostics, X ray installations. So it is a happy moment for us to ready made technology which may save millions of lives. Uh, can be possible through that. Our tile manufacturing process expertise to implement and scale up this new technology with required modification helped us to get this success. We have made huge investment in this every stage of process to make this technology, this product successful. Relentlessly, Ampri put their best possible support to make it successful. After super animation of Dr. Shangi, Dr. Savi has extended wonderful support. As he mentioned, he's a wonderful presentation also, nitty-gitties of the process and everything. So I will not elaborate that area. I, on behalf of Johnson, extending my gratitude to CSIR Ampli and CSIR as a whole. Now we have manufactured tiles as an industrial scale, waiting for BARC to test those tiles and give the final nod. I'm quite confident the result will be excellent, will be excellent and total process will complete by this month end. And we are going to launch non-toxic, non-reactive radiation shielding interlocking tiles by next month and which may save millions of life. But as Dr. Shavi mentioned in his last, last slide, you will be eagerly waiting for the gamma shielding material, which is having much more impact to replace carcinogenic lead, red shielding, and truly scientific development. We'll be waiting for you, CSIR Ampri, to develop gamma shielding material. And, and the day it will be developed, Johnson will be the first company to take it to basically total component, not, not only X-ray, gamma shielding, also in all nuclear establishments, as well as medical 
chemotherapy department and other things. So true solution for hospital industry will come up after gamma shielding. Thank you very much. Thank you from my side. Uh, thanks for patience hearing, but at the same time, the tremendous hard work and, and effort Johnson as well as Ampri has done during this scale up process, day to day, morning, evening, we talked each other to make it successful. I think, I hope this product will benefit the industry and benefit the human race. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Saha, for your talk today, sharing your experience of your association with CSIR Ampri for the X-ray shielding tiles and also with other CSIR laboratories in various aspects. So thank you once again. Thank you all uh, speakers for sharing your experience on the development of uh, lead-free X-ray shielding tiles and its application. So now we keep this forum open for uh, discussion among the speakers and I shall take few questions uh, from our viewers. I'll just have a look. So yeah, first question comes from my side only. Uh, how are these uh, red, mud, mud, uh, red mud which are produced are disposed if it is not utilized? One thing that you said is uh, they are stored, so, but how long it can be stored? So actually, uh, I will answer for this question. So there is no long, normally the life of one, this disposal plant is 15 to 20 years. Because the sodium itself is, uh, is uh, highly reactive in nature. That's why this red mud disposal plants, they damage. They, normally, they make very thick wall of, uh, with, uh, um, which is uh, are made with iron mesh as well as this um, uh, bricks, not bricks, um, stones. And also, they make special design with the clay also, so that the sodium won't easily react. But however, after 10 to 15, 20 years, it start to erode and it damage and it broke out. This happened also. But it is a very expensive process. I can I can add on it. If you go to any any alumina plant like Belgaon, Hindalco plant, you will find the plant area three times more than plant area is the disposal area. So they make a huge area for disposing only because there is no solution. Very few people take this material for construction industry. Other than that, there is no use. And basically ground, they put thick clay layer, non-reactive clay layer and, and slide, side walls and everything and make it just like a stored and waiting for somebody to take the PTAVL condition. And it's not a problem of uh, Illumina industry. It's a problem of overall, in, overall country also. Wasting and overall world, not only country, still, still no mitigation method has developed for uh, alumina waste with high, high iron content and high sodium, which is more dangerous. Thank you, sir. So, sir, please unshare your slides. It will be very helpful here. Um, yeah, so one more thing I would like to know, other than the medical application that we have seen till now for the extra shielding tiles, do we have in scope any other application in any uh, other field? This particular one, radiation shielding. Hello, your voice is not coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about this uh, talk of topic of today's talk only, red mud uh, shielding it tiles. Can be it's used in every every airport. You are you are going scanning your material through X-ray, and small X-ray machines are there. That yeah. is there itself is lead is there. Nothing else because they want to work in a very small space. So that is why every airport, every X-ray scanning machine of the material is with lead lead window through the lead sheet, and it can be replaced with it. It may be little weight more. And maybe instead of two millimeter, it will be 12 millimeter. But days will be coming. End of the day, this lead, which is having more dangerous effect, will be removing not only medical industry. So extra scanning, any any security purpose, it can be used. This particular product can be used. And also for this uh, sterilization plants can be used. And uh, for example, wherever this uh, medical 
so after the treatment the patient will be kept for observation they will be become radioactive and the storing of those radioactive nuclides and research organizations can also use particle accelerator synchrotrons and so on applications after, are keep on and industrial radiography after chemotherapy still this material cannot be used because it is a only x ray x ray shielding it is not a gamma shielding so yeah. chemotherapy after chemotherapy that room is totally lead still it cannot be so if you do the gamma one as i told you 100% security and protection for hospital industry will come if the gamma one also we will able to launch with with uh, shielding one but okay. i know we will be able to do it within 3 to 4 years time yeah, yeah definitely <laughs> so dr shavi myself and dr yes. shivastava maybe we will not be with the system so and dr arthur also we should do faster within our system we'll try our best okay so we have uh, another question from one of our viewer dr neeraj marwa so he is asking uh, is it possible to replace cobalt 60 with nickel uh, then uh, what will be the change in the density and structure size any response dr shabi yes of course for example see the energy of the beam will vary with respect to source to source for example if we use wherever they use neutron treatment i have shown already when it's bombarded with the boron they will normally with the cancer patient so inside that they will first uh, inject some boron then they will radiate neutron so boron will absorb these uh, neutrons not 100 percent a certain percentage and then it will produce uh alpha particle alpha ray as well as it will also produce this uh, gamma rays of uh, 2.3 mev okay if we use gadolinium then it's the gamma ray which emit is different so for example uh, in the linac itself i can take that this operating from 1 mev to 18 mev x ray so the energy depend upon the energy we need to change the radiation shielding material for example if any uh, cobalt 60 if you use you don't need to worry about um, uh, the neutron shielding because there is no neutron is produced but if you go to above 8 mev then you have to also think about neutrons also because this gamma ray or x ray itself will produce neutrons when it bombarded with this radiation shielding material or the body of the patient or everywhere so then it has to be also shielded so it's depend upon completely depend upon material used to use so that we cannot like for example in iodine therapy where they use for if they have throat cancer or iodine therapy then the uh, energy is used is less so for example 450 white concrete is sufficient but cobalt is more high so depend upon source to source used to use okay thank you so much so i think we don't have any further questions from viewers thank you everyone once again it was really thank great you. listening to all the speakers today and was interesting to know about the this lead free x ray shielding tiles developed by csir ampri so we have almost reached the end of the session so uh, i uh, we have viewers connected from schools as well as school students i would request uh, director sir once again to have some closing remarks and uh, some guidance to our viewers here yeah um, uh, when uh, it comes to closing remarks it's like a, a abstract or conclusion of entire proceeding um, what i would like to say that it's a excellent material but csir or i should say at this moment nation has developed to make country atmanirbhar and its import substitute is made in india and it's a replacement of bricks concrete lead steel or uh, as far as x ray shielding is concerned and um, we are very happy the, um, uh, considering both sides csir and prison johnson that most probably uh, we'll have this uh, product launch very soon maybe within a month or so and uh, the second point what i would like to say after all discussion and what is happening day to day in csir ampri in this direction that gamma ray shielding tiles will come out definitely within our tenure so <laughs> i am very hopeful and it will be it will happen and then um, uh, to a message for our uh, 
researchers and uh, especially the young students that there is a lot of scope in uh, in the field of technology development uh, using our own r d uh, methods knowledge expertise capability and facilities available within the country so please come forward join hands in the field of research and development work for the country develop our technologies for the substitute of uh, import technologies and also technologies which can be exported with this we've come in thank you namaskar thank you so much sir so i now request dr sks rathor chief scientist and head ppt csir ampri to kindly present the vote of thanks for today's webinar over to you dr rathor thank you dr shikha in fact it's my proud privilege to propose vote of thanks on this occasion at csir at 80 80 years of csir and azadi ka amrit mahotsav so to begin with i would like to thank uh, uh, my friend rather my in, to some extent guide also mr sudeep to saha sir i learned too many things from you so <laughs> i interacted from day one with mr saha so as a head bd uh, i was uh, associated with transfer of this technology from day one so i am really thankful to you and uh, rather we had been to the factory of uh, mrs prism johnson to mumbai as well as uh, bangalore also so he supported in all respect and finally we could transfer the technology at csir headquarters in the presence of honorable dg csir on 10th of june 2019 and uh, with the help of uh, this technology we got a nrdc award also now i am thankful to the person who has uh, helped and guided csir empri for last 4 years for achieving new heights in academics in r and d uh, and to the extent that uh, empri so far could transfer 22 technology in its history and out of 22 we have transferred 14 technology under the dynamic leadership of none other than dr ak shivastav our director so thank you sir Uh, i am thankful to our team members in fact uh, it's a continuous effort starting from uh, former uh, acting director dr ss amrit phale then dr sk sanghi and now the work is being carried out by dr shabi dr deepthi and dr mohammad akram khan i am thankful to all team members i am thankful to csr headquarter dr shikha and other officers and scientists of csr headquarter for supporting this event i am thankful to all those persons those who are not visible on the screen for making this event successful thank you all thank you namaste thank you very much sir so wish you all a very happy diwali stay safe and have a nice